Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Any Ubuntu fans out there? If not, do you have a Linux distribution of choice? And I know Alan would say, ah, forget Linux, go FreeBSD. But this isn't about FreeBSD. Although it is kind of funny because Alan, uh, who is uh, the guy who created the chat applet on our website, live.perillo.com, uh, uh, as well as other things, he's also our system administrator, teaches FreeBSD courses in, uh, uh, well, in a, at the university level, I believe, in, in somewhere in Canada. I don't know if I can say exactly where, uh, but someone today recognized him for his involvement with what we do here, with the video and the ventrilo and the talking tech. Which really kind of, well, I thought it was kind of cool. So he's a big free BSD guy, but this is the top five things that you need to know before you try Ubuntu, as submitted by Brady. And uh, I thought it was quite an extensive list. I can't go into too many details, but we're saving the show notes. Uh, most of them uh, will be posted to the corresponding blog post at chris.perillo.com. He says, hey, Chris, I've been wanting to come up with five common things I get asked about Ubuntu on my channel and share it with your subscribers because many of mine also subscribe to you. I'm going to do my best to realistically put it in perspective to those who try Ubuntu for the very first time. Number five, have a broadband connection. Ubuntu is very net dependent. When you start with a clean install of the OS and begin popping in your music CDs, reviewing websites like YouTube, initially getting web plugins, audio and video codecs are prompted automatically to the, for the user to install, but only if the computer has access to the web. This also includes certain proprietary video and network drivers, which are needed, they need to be obtained when updating the current system. The reason for this is these multiple sources of code are under different licenses, and though they may be free, the license requires the end user to electronically agree to the terms and conditions of the software. Number four, make sure your hardware is supported. Now he put that in all caps, so that's important. Many people assume everything will just work right out of the box. It's not the case in certain hardware. The toughest problems people have is when it comes to wireless hardware. There's one major chip designed by Broadcom, which is used by many companies in their wireless devices, in many retail products and white box systems. Though older models of these Broadcom uh, chipsets have over time been worked out to get them functioning, some do have difficulty with connecting to a secure WPA2 wireless router or flat out not work at all. To avoid this, many laptops that have an Intel and Realtek-based graphics chipsets cards work right out of the box. There's also a list created by the Free Software Foundation of a list of supported wireless, I think, okay, of a list of, that's what he's written, of supported wireless chipsets that will also work out of the box at fsf.org. That's where you can go to find it. Another option which I find works well are wireless bridges. Many companies such as D-Link, SMC, and Linksys make these products. They plug into your existing port, your network port, on your PC and redirect it to connect to the local router programmed on the device you set up. This may be the best bet for those who have desktops and are, you know, a bit clunky because to travel with a laptop and an adapter like that, and it's not exactly convenient. Number three, if you're a gamer, you may be limiting what possible game titles you can play. There are a slew of games for Linux that are free, and there are certain commercial game titles that you can play using Wine. There is, though, limitations on what may work under Wine. If a certain game is heavily dependent on DirectX 10 or a combination of ActiveX plugins, and it's not likely to port over well into Wine. Since DirectX and ActiveX are copyright protected plugins and two of Microsoft's exclusive technologies, it's not going to be available for other OSs anytime soon. You can find out what games work by checking the Wine database list of software testbed that works at appdb.winehq.org. So just go to Wine, W-I-N-E, like, you know, drinking wine, hq.org. Apparently my computer is terraforming itself. However, companies like Activision, ID, or id Software, Bioware, and many companies have made commercially supported cross-platforms of their games for Linux. Example, Quake Wars, Call of Duty 1 through 4, Doom 1 through 3, Quake 1 through 4, Unreal Championship 1 through 3, and all have native Linux installations. Many of these companies I mentioned also make Mac platforms also of the same title. So basically, uh, you're going to find a handful of games that will run right out of the box. Number two, drivers not 
needed. Many devices, such as scanners, digital cameras, webcams, and printers, need to be factored in, and you don't in need, in many cases, to install drivers for them. If you have a device which doesn't have a proprietary chipsets, mind you, ones I know just work include Logitech webcams, uh, di certain digital cameras, TV or FM tuners, uh, printers, etc. Now, this is where you want to go to find out if your devices are compatible. LinuxCompatible.org. G. Number one, just buy a pre-built Ubuntu supported PC. Instead of second guessing on everything, you can just buy a full complete with 30 to a year of tech support, 30 days I think is what he meant to write there, from the following vendors that support Ubuntu tested hardware. I, I, Dell slash open or Dell.com slash open. Zar, Zar Reason, Z-A-R-E-A-S-O-N dot com and System76 dot com. And I'm sorry if I said any of those things wrong. It's, it's a little weird to read an email uh, from a sheet, but I think his intentions were well and good. Um, yeah, Ubuntu, I think, is here to stay. I think it's going to see, uh, out of all the Linux distributions, the most amount of success on the desktop. I don't know if it necessarily makes the best gaming OS uh, for Linux, but I'm sure everybody's going to have a different opinion. Uh, we've talked about that in another video we recorded with the community today. Uh, if you have any other useful tips and tricks uh, for new Linux users, uh, maybe some power user tips, you know, for people who are just starting to get around inside of Linux, feel free to share them. My email address is chris at perillo.com. And, uh, you know, I check my email every five minutes so long as um, I can find it again. I think it's behind that mountain over there, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, if you want to join us for a rousing round of chat, we're typically talking tech in a chat room with hundreds of people, and in some cases, hundreds of people watching the live video feed, because that's what we're doing. I, I stream a live video feed of me doing this. This is what, this is what if you come by, this is what you're likely going to see. And you're, sometimes you'll hear me typing. That's kind of the extent of it and but the chat room stays active we talk and we ask questions we add you know it's just a window into our own worlds our universes and you're welcome to join us we're open 24 hours a day seven days a week at live.perillo.com will you later